What's going on, wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. So Survivor Series 2023 is right around the corner. In fact, it is tomorrow. But we're gonna do as we always do on this wrestling channel and any other wrestling YouTuber in the history of wrestling YouTubers, we're gonna predict what's going to happen on that show. Now, before we get started, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and let's get into this. So really quick, I think it's really cool because we're having the Survivor Series War Games event at the Allstate Arena this year. And my very first major wrestling uh, uh, event, PLE, pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it, for WWE that I've ever been to was in the exact same venue for the exact same show back in 2019 where they had War Games, which was actually at the time a NXT TakeOver event. And what was cool about that event, not only because Kevin Owens came out as a surprise entrant and it was an amazing show, they gave us these wristbands that said NXT on it. <clears throat> that flashed the colors of whatever wrestler came down the ramp. I thought that was really cool. I hope they do something like that again. You know, I'm big on like souvenirs, but also on that Sunday, we had Survivor Series at the exact same venue, which I thought was amazing. It was a great show, but the first time they've ever did NXT versus Raw versus SmackDown. And I thought it was great because if you watch the Black and Gold era at that time, you always felt like the wrestlers down there could supersede a lot of those wrestlers on their main roster and to allow them to get some limelight, especially for the casuals, I thought that was great for NXT. So for me, it feels like it went full circle. I'm not bragging. It's just that when I was a kid, I could never go to any wrestling shows. And I told myself that when I got older, whenever I make enough money, I will, I will go to as many pay-per-views as possible. I've gone to a lot of like wrestling shows, like NXT takeovers and independent shows and things like that and live events, but I haven't been to a lot of pay-per-views. So this is going to be a great experience. Hopefully I see some of you guys there. Now, Let's get into why you guys clicked on this video, okay? Let's predict what's about to happen here, okay? Now, most of you guys still believe that CM Punk is going to show up somehow. I kind of told you guys this over and over. Please do not pay attention to these dirt sheets. I don't read them. You can do whatever you want, but I don't read dirt sheets. I don't pay attention to rumors because all they're going to do is set you up to be disappointed in a pay-per-view and not watch the pay-per-view for what it is. You're not going to experience how great it is if it's really good because you're going to be so disappointed because you're so piped up based upon something that people are saying that are rumors based off of no legitimate sources, okay? And I get that there was egg, there were Easter eggs and things like that, but I still don't believe that CM Punk is gonna be there. Now, people believe that CM Punk is gonna come in and attack Randy and take his spot. I still don't believe that's gonna happen. I think if there was a possibility of CM Punk returning, I, I would think that it would be more likely that he will probably cost the Miz his title, his title shot against Gunther, because him and the Miz has history. You know, they've been friends back in the past, but as time went on, the Miz is like, I don't know why CM Punk doesn't like me anymore. He said that verbatim. It's, it's in articles that he actually said that. And the and, and CM Punk has always wanted to be champion in the main uh, a, a event of a, of a WrestleMania and the Miz got that opportunity. So there can be some jealousy there. Like there's a lot of story that could be played around with when it comes to these two. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I feel like that that's most likely going to happen if he does return or he's probably show up in, in Albany, New York for Raw right after or this upcoming Monday. So I think that's more of a possibility than anything else. But let's talk about what is actually a possibility. We know for sure that's going to happen. We're going to start off with the first match and that was between Eric Andre, the buff Eric Andre in Carlito versus Santos Escobar. And I think this match is fairly obvious who's going to win this. And it's going to be Santos Escobar because they're trying to develop him into this big heel. And I think they're doing a fantastic job of starting him off right now. And on the mic, he's fantastic. I think he's really good. And I feel like that the best route to go with him at this point, and this is going to be a little fantasy book in here, is that they should have him beat Carlito and then destroy him after the match is over to have him be the person that's kind of like a miniature equivalent of when randy orton was a legend killer just have him take out each member of lwo and really hurt them and really injure them one by one and if he's able to do that and to finally come across uh uh, Rey Mysterio at the end. I think Rey Mysterio is a great baby face that people can cheer on against any heel. I think that would be a great storyline to build for the OWO as opposed to him just leaving a group, you know, fighting one person, then all of a sudden going as a heel. I think they can really keep the fans queuing off of this whole scenario. So hopefully they go that route. But in the end of the day, I still believe that Santos Escobar is going to win this. If you don't think so, let me know in the comment section why you believe Carlito should win this match. I think he has zero reasons to do it, but hey, I love to hear what other people have to think. So the next match they have here on the card, and I don't think this is in the right order, but it is what it is. We have the Women's World Championship match between Rhea Ripley and Zoe Starks. Now here, here's the interesting thing here, is that I was never a big fan of Zoe Stark, even when she was in NXT. 
I always felt like her promos felt like really forced and I still feel like she has those tendencies now where she's like, yeah, because I had something to eat and Thanksgiving had macaroni and cheese. And it's like, what? like, like it's, it's weird. Like it, it always happens like that. She still does it, but I can see where in the ring that she's like, she's actually more talented than they're able to display. I, I feel like she didn't really give much in that whole scenario with Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, but I think this is a great opportunity for her to showcase her talent and for Rhea Ripley to actually have an opportunity to defend her title in a singles match because I know you know people complained about that and I'm not saying she hasn't before, but it's a, a better opportunity for her to showcase that she can put on a good singles match that does not involve Charlotte Flair. So hopefully they have a great match here. I'm rooting for the both of them, but I really feel like that Rhea Ripley is definitely going to retain there's no reason for Zoe Starks to win this match at all. Not at this moment. Maybe give her a couple years and it will probably make more sense for that to happen. Maybe they can make her start her own faction. Who knows? I don't know. But I got Rhea Ripley. So the next match, we have the Intercontinental Championship between Gunta, the ring general versus The Miz. Now, what we got here is two of the best, you know, Intercontinental Champions of all time. Gunta, obviously, for so many reasons and for as long as his reign and The Miz, for you know being one of the, of the people who elevated that title over time well and I, I love what they're doing with the Miz right now it seems like they're taking him a little bit more seriously uh as opposed to what they've been doing in the past year making him the butt of every joke and i did a video where i said that this is probably how the Miz could win this match against gunther i'm going to put the link in the description you may disagree with me but just hear it out i think it may be an interesting perspective let me know in the comments what you think but at the end of the day, I think that Gunther is definitely going to win this. He's going to retain this. I just hope that this match showcases how great The Miz is in the ring because some people aren't old enough to experience The Miz back in the day, like when he had that match against Dolph Ziggler, where that was a fantastic... Like, some people weren't around to see that. So hopefully we get that Miz or some resemblance of that Miz in this match to show new fans that he actually can go in the ring. He's not just a person who's joking with celebrities and things like that that's a part of his skill set that's a tool in in in, in his uh his his toolbox but that's not exactly who he is 100 and that's all so i'm hoping that that is the case it kind of you know the small part of me the 0.001 percent of me is is wondering one i told you guys i would like to see matt cardona come in and cost the miz the match and they'll have their thing i think that would be great to see but i don't think that's gonna happen and then the other part of me is like the whole thing with Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni, like the whole thing of them trying to garner uh, the Gunther's like approval and how he treated Ludwig when he kind of like did him dirty. And fans are really in love with Ludwig. Like, believe it or not, there are a lot of people who like Ludwig. So I'm wondering if Ludwig would even attempt to cost uh, Walter the match by trying to help him. I'm wondering if that's the case, but hopefully if they do do something like that, at least let these gentlemen, the Miz and, the Gun and, and Gun the Gunther, let Gunther have a, a great one-on-one -on -one match before that happens so we can get like a, a resemblance of something happening in there. But again, I got Gunther, the Gunther winning this match. Uh, hopefully a great match, hopefully a great match. So after that, it says on here, we have the uh, women's war game match between Damage Control and Team um, Bianca Belair. And I think in this match, I think we got damage control going over. I think, you know, with Kyrie Sane coming back and Asuka being there, um, I think, you know, they're going to have one of the newer additions, maybe Kyrie Sane being the person to make the pin to win this match. And maybe to some degree, they're going to play a storyline of probably trying to get Bailey out of the group. I feel like that she knows she doesn't belong and there's some jealousy that's going to happen between her and Kyrie because you remember she is the one who tried to break Kyrie Sane's face open by smashing her into a letter and she still has that in the back of her head like hey this girl is out to get me at some point she's going to try to uh, en enact her revenge on me and that paranoia is probably going to take over and make her overreact to certain things and think of things that you know that Kyrie is trying to plot something when Kyrie really, Kyrie really isn't but it's her paranoia that's infecting the mind of Bailey and making her make these decisions to try to get her out of it. And it'll be interesting if that was the case the entire time that Kyrie was basically giving her Easter eggs like one day, I'm gonna get you back. You know, it's gonna happen. So in the end of the day, I got uh, damage control winning this match and I'm hoping this is gonna be a really good match, but with the people involved, it, there is no way that it's not. There is no way. And the interesting thing is I, the last time I saw a War Games match, uh, Io Shirai and Bianca Belair was in that match as well. So I, I think this is going to be very cool to see. So the main event of this card is the men's war games match between Team Cody Rhodes, who I call the Super Saiyan Pastor versus the Judgment Day. Now, the interesting thing about this entire match, most people may say, well, there's no real consequence in this, is that there is an opportunity to build a lot of story out of here. And the interesting part about Randy Orton being the fifth member of Team Cody Rhodes 
him and Jay Uso already have a past. We don't know what Randy is thinking. And I think that's the coolest thing about Randy's uh, persona is that we don't know what he's going to do, especially with a finisher like the RKO that can happen at any point in time. And he's been going for a while. So we don't know. We don't know what this man is thinking. We don't know what this man saw. We don't know what he's been doing since he was gone in kayfabe. Of course, we know he was injured in, in, in actuality, but we don't know what he's going to do. And also we have the whole thing with Drew McIntyre and we have Damian Priest. You know, Damian doesn't like new members of the Judgment Day. So there's another storyline that could play out there. It's so many things that happen can happen here in the ring. Although people say that there's no consequences, but they can do what kind of what they do in New Japan. They build storylines inside the ring and it can develop on shows down the road. So I think this is a great opportunity to do that. Now, in saying that, uh, if you saw my other video, I picked Team Cody Rhodes to win this. And the, the way that I had it booked is to have Drew McIntyre try to pin Jey Uso. And then you'll have Damian Priest pull Dre, Drew McIntyre off out of jealousy because Damian Priest, for one, does not like people who are not a part of the group getting a part of Judgment Day activities. Okay. That's one of the main things he don't like. But also because he is the leader of the team for war games he wants to be the one to seal the deal and not drew mcintyre and i think when he pulls drew off they're gonna have this whole thing where they're arguing and having a little scuffle then randy orton's gonna come out and rko one of them jay uso is going to super kick the other one and then they're gonna pin them for one two three and then when they get up and raise their hands in the air there is a slight possibility that randy orton is going to rko jay uso at the end of the match after they win and it's going to continue a storyline between the two of them which i think could be really good um the other thing is is that when that happens that's going to cause that rift between damian priest and uh drew mcintyre which is uh, was already there i mean it's not a new rift he drew mcintyre basically made it known that i don't like none of y'all i'm just here to win this match so i did a video before it's called uh about the judgment day i'm going to put that link in the description which will describe how they should play this whole thing out which i think it'll perfectly match out with this whole entire thing but at the end of the day, I feel like Cody Rose team is going to win. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What's your predictions for Survivor Series 2023 War Games? I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Salute. Peace. Have a good day.